Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel. Now this video is part of my course Superbase for iOS developers, a complete bootcamp. The course is available on my website adamsharp.school and you can pre-order the course for just $89 right now. And once the course is completed, the price will be updated to $149. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we'll be covering in this course. You can see setting up the budget app, setting up the actual application for inserting, deleting, updating the budget. Then we're going to look at the MV pattern, how we can use that. We're going to also learn about the relationships, authentication, storage, and there are some other sections that are coming in, including edge functions, real-time API, and even many-to-many -many relationships in Superbase. So this will be the complete course it's not available anywhere else. Uh, nobody is creating such detailed course on Superbase. This is the only one available and you can get it for $89 or you can simply subscribe and get access to all the past as well as future courses. So this is the best deal for you. Check out awesomesharp.school and the link will be right there in the description. Now let's go back to the video. Our next task is to update an existing budget item. So let's go ahead and continue with that. In order to update an existing budget item, we will have to first go to a different screen and we can call this budget detail screen. So let me go ahead and create a new view and let's go ahead and create it. We'll say budget detail screen. Perfect. In order for the budget details screen to work on the budget, you need to pass in the budget. So we'll go ahead and pass in the budget. Now you can see the preview is complaining that's saying that, hey, you gotta pass in the budget. So this is gonna be a little bit interesting. Like what can we pass as a budget? Well, right now we can simply go ahead and pass in some sort of a budget item. So I can say budget, let's say groceries, just so that it can compile. And the limit, $500, that's fine. Okay, we can also set the navigation title to be the budget title. So I can say over here budget dot name that will be the title. And for the preview, I can also go ahead and add a navigation stack just for the preview itself. So I can see the navigation bar on the top and the navigation title. Great, it says groceries. Okay, let's go back to the budget list screen. And over here in the for each part, we can start using a navigation link, all right? Now, the, in the navigation link, you can see that there are several different options over here. Uh, what do we want to display in the navigation link? Well, we can actually display, we don't really want to use value over here, although you can because it's not really a dynamic kind of a navigation. It's more of just click on it, go to the detail, and that's it. Um, we do want to display a little bit more information so I can use a destination and the label. So in this case, the destination will be the budget detail screen. We're going to pass in the budget. And the label over here would be the budget cell view. So I can just copy the budget cell view. And there we go. Now you can see this identifier. Oops, let me actually go ahead and load up something. Uh, what happened over here? It started typing somewhere. Now you can see these accessory identifiers are over there and I can go to the detail screen. Great. So on the detail screen, we are already passing the budget. So how can we edit the budget? Well, there are different ways of doing that. Um, if we want to provide some sort of a save button and cancel, well, we can and that would be fine too. Uh, if we just want to edit the budget, we can also try to do that, but still we will add some sort of a save button, all right, so that we can validate and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of that. Well, not remove all of that, just remove the form, I guess, or the label. And inside the form, now I can go ahead and create things that I need for the detail. So I'll go ahead and create a state object. We'll call it name. 
we'll start with this and we will also go ahead and create the other thing which is a limit so both of those things that we have already used when we were adding the budget all right now you might be wondering hold on a second adding the budget this screen looks pretty much similar to the add budget screen why can't we just use that well you can i mean that's fine if you want to use that um, for the budget details screen i will also be displaying the expenses so i will just use the budget details screen all right just to separate them out next i'm going to go ahead and create a text field we will just say enter name and value will be name and the same thing we can do for the limit so text field in this case we are going to use enter limit and we are going to use the limit and the number okay we also need some sort of a button so i can just call it update button i guess that's fine there we go we got an update button okay now one of the things that we want to do is when the user lands on this particular screen budget detail screen then we are already passing some sort of an existing budget now this budget should also have an id i guess i'm not really passing over here but what we need to do is to we need to assign those things to the name and the limit so what i will do is on appear we can actually perform that so the name can become budget dot name and the limit we can become budget dot limit all right and now you can see that these things are now getting populated automatically because those are the things that we're trying to edit so we got the name we got the limit a user can go ahead and delete these groceries and update their uh the 500 to 200 or whatever they want to do and then we can actually call over here update budget again what is this update budget well this update budget will be a function that we can use private function uh, we'll call it update budget okay and inside this budget detail screen we also do need access to the superbase client so I can just go ahead and add it over here as an environment value. So environment path, and we can say superbase client, this can be development client, because we are in the development mode, I guess. So we can use development client. You can use other clients if you have, or other settings or configurations that you have, like test or production. You have to build those things, but you can still use it. So in the update budget, which is fired over here, we can also say async and again i can use the unstructured concurrency over here which is task so this means that if you're updating the budget and something happens to the view the view kind of like goes away then it will still update the budget which is fine i mean that's exactly what i actually wanted to do inside the update budget function this is where we will have to actually update the budget so I will first get a reference to the environment object. So this is the environment object, okay, for the Superbase client. And over here, we can actually go ahead and update. So I'll say Superbase client dot from, again, the table name remains the same, which is budgets. I can actually write it like this, dot update. And now we can pass in the key value pair all right so the key that we want to update the name we want to update the name and the name will be simply well the name what about what about the limit do we want to update the limit well yes we do want to update the limit also so i'll add the key over here for limit and i can pass in the limit over here now limit over here is optional so we will have some issues over here you can go ahead and we can unwrap it limit equals to not budget dot limit it will be just limit because it's kind of like a local state local state over here okay 
then we also need to find out because if I simply try to update this command then it's going to be a problem it's going to update all of them so that's why I need to provide that we are actually updating the budget with the ID and now I can pass in those IDs so I can go ahead and say budget dot ID and I can unwrap it all right now budget will have an ID so that's why I'm forcefully unwrapping it if you don't like that then go to line number 22 and go ahead and unwrap it I mean that's not a big deal right I mean we can do it over here also there we go it will keep everyone happy hopefully and now we can use an ID it's already unwrapped dot execute okay the update is not really going to return us any sort of value uh, we can definitely do something about that like maybe we do need the value but the update itself is not really going to return anything let's go ahead and to do try await because this is a throwable function we're going to wrap all of this in do try cache block and print out the error if there is some error now this is kind of complaining over here it's saying conflicting arguments because we're trying to update and we're creating this dictionary and the key over here is name the value is named the limit is the key but the value is uh, something else it's more of like a double so how can we use that or how can we configure this scenario now one of the ways to fix this issue is we can't really pass in like this right i mean if we're creating a dictionary over here you can see that we're getting these kind of errors conflicting arguments of generic parameter value double versus string all right so how do we fix this problem well one of the ways to fix this problem is what if we create updated budget something like this where we can pass in the name and we can pass in the limit also so we create a new instance of the budget which is already codable because that is one of the requirements of the update function if you call the update function you can see that the value has to be encodable and codable basically means encodable and decodable so that satisfies that requirement and now we can pass in the updated budget let's go ahead and build it great and let's go ahead and run this and see if it updates the budget or not so right now we have uh, let's go to the budget list screen so we have groceries we have vacation if i go to go groceries i can say groceries 2 and then go ahead and change the budget to 750 we'll update now the update should have taken place we don't really want to go back once the update has happened i mean maybe you can show some sort of a toast or something that the update has happened and if we go back you can see it's grossly to 750 dollars and if we go over here you can also see that that particular grocery is to 750 dollars has been updated all right so there we go this is how we will and let's go back again and update that so we'll just take it take off uh, two over here update and now I can go back over here all right so this is how we can actually create our you know application that can update now one of the other things if you want to do is what we can do is over here let's see we're calling it budget name I wonder what will happen if I just call it like name over here okay let's go back to the budget list screen we're gonna go with the groceries oh now it kind of messes it up because we're doing it inside the but inside the on appear right because it doesn't really have that kind of a value so let's go ahead and change it back again budget.name for now there we go fine everything looks fine over here okay so this is kind of like updating for our case.